Hi there, Chris here with another fresh tip for you all. In this video, we are gonna talk about brushes. And this is gonna probably be a two-parter as I will demonstrate um, basically care for the brushes as well. And of course, maybe even some correcting, but we are gonna take a look at the brushes themselves. And as you can see here, I have a small assortment of brushes available for us miniature painters. I have, for example, I have like Army Painter, I've got Citadel, I even have the Evy Metal, which are Citadel, Artis Opus, Rubelov, I've got a Windsor Newton Series 7, Games and Gears, uh, this was back when uh, Itchy Ben had their name on that one, and of course I've got like a Vallejo on the end over here, and this is a small plethora of brushes as there are plenty of brands out there like Da Vinci, Raphael, all sorts of different, uh, you know, brushes companies out there doing miniature brushes uh, for sable and of course synthetics. And when you're brand new to this hobby, being really kind of wrapped up in the discussion of the best brushes, which comes up a lot and always pops up again and again, I often remind people not to get caught up in those kinds of discussions as when you're brand new to this hobby, you really are not able to discern whether or not any of these brushes are any good regarding whatever kind of paint job you happen to be doing. And basically it is one of those things that you can just end up overthinking and it's really kind of a waste of time. As you develop as a painter, you will discern what qualities of a brush that you like in your painting. And again, these are entirely subjective as each a uh, painter as they develop and become more experienced will develop certain things that they like, particular techniques that they gravitate towards and particular brands of paint and so on and so forth. So what does that mean basically for all of these brushes? Well, it's again, it's a marketing thing. It is, you know, obviously, you know, you'll see a lot of videos where basically I will use a lot of Artist Opus. I'll use a lot of Citadel brushes, like these older brown handled heavy metal brushes that came in a, a master's brush set. I actually really, really enjoy them they got a nice long bristle length on them and when you're looking for brushes for example you don't have a hobby store near you or you know it's not as convenient oftentimes a lot of the big box stores or even uh, some art supply places which i would highly recommend you go to uh, periodically for you know your paints and brushes if you're going to look in any of those locations for out of the norm kind of brushes look to the watercolor line of brushes brushes that are designed for use with watercolor. That is closer to the kind of painting often we are doing when we are working with the color in a very thinned out glaze like consistency, especially when we're doing washes and you know, we're layering, we're breaking the paint down and really thin and things of that nature. That's those kinds of watercolor brushes have the qualities on which we like. Now, personally, I prefer sable haired brushes Again, that's a personal choice though, uh, for oftentimes working with uh, more solvent-based type paints and lacquers and acrylic paints that require, you know, mixing them with uh, alcohol to thin them down. Uh, I often will use synthetic brushes and companies like Army Painter and Vallejo offer synthetic brushes. From what I understand, Citadel brushes are a blend of sable and uh, synthetic. So, you know, anybody who's really concerned about that, although these other ones uh, are a pure sable. Artist Opus, I do believe is a pure sable. These Rubelovs here are a sable right out of Russia. I've um, really kind of been enjoying these ones. Each brush has their own pluses and minuses. Really what you're looking for, when you look at like, say for example, a pure sable brush, the hairs, for example, will bend very, very easily, but you'll see how the brush snaps right back into a straight point again. Well, roughly straight point again. Uh, whereas like synthetics, they do snap right back just fine, but oftentimes uh, when we are doing glazing and stuff like that, I find synthetics just do not hang on to the paint as well as a sable does, especially when you are trying to, you know, do fine lines and get into details, do eyeballs, all that really, you know, fine detail type of work. I just don't really uh, have a lot of confidence in a lot of synthetic brushes. But again, that is a personal choice. I know there's plenty of painters out there who are doing just superb work with synthetic brushes. And, you know, for anybody who's really kind of conscious about how they farm uh, sable hair, you know, synthetic is a, you know, a, I guess a kind of responsible type of solution. 
although it is nylon and tacklon and such, the synthetic brushes, they are derived from plastics, which is derived from oil. So one could argue all these points all day long. That's not really the point of this video, but you know, you hear these arguments all the time as far as, you know, being um, responsible artists and things of that nature and not farming these, uh, the hairs, because basically sable hair comes from a uh, mink, essentially. It's a Russian mink. That's, and they, they have these really fine hairs and that's what they farm these animals for. For the, uh, they don't kill them or anything like that. They just, you know, shave them. Uh, you know, I don't know. Hopefully, they're not mistreating them. But anyway, that is the difference: is the natural hair brushes. And of course, you know, you will get other kinds of um, hairs as well when you are, if you're going to art art supply places, you'll find brushes that are, um, you know, uh, hog hair, horse hair, squirrel hair, things of those kind of uh, um, kind of natural kind of fibers. Although those have different roles within painting, like canvas painting, because, like for example using hog hair uh, is good for oil painting because it's a really, really strong, thick bristle. And it's really good for moving that very thick paint, especially for artists who work with their paint in a very thick consistency like that in oil painting. And those brushes uh, really excel at that. And they don't really do us any good as far as miniature painting. Miniature painting, uh, if you're going to art supply places, I definitely would recommend you look at the watercolor brush line. Now there are synthetic watercolor brushes and there are natural hair watercolor brushes, but either way, I'm sure you'll be fine. But again, you know, you wanna find something that has about a, uh, a centimeter length of bristle. Uh, you might wanna look at, uh, typically artist um, brushes will often be numbered. So you're looking at anywhere from like a zero, double zero, or even a one. Artist Opus does zeros, ones, double zeros, I think a triple zero, and a two as well in their uh, main brush set. Citadel offers their brushes uh, in a fun, well, the current line, I should say, of Citadel brushes, they offer uh, their brushes according to what kind of job they think that you should be using it for, which is actually pretty handy for those who uh, are relatively new to this whole painting experience. And, you know, you don't want to be wasting your time, for example, using a artificial brush to do your base coating. Well, they have a line of brushes that are designed for doing base coating and for, you know, what they figure is for glazing and dry brushing and all of these things. That makes it fairly handy for when you are painting and especially when you are relatively new. But essentially they're all just, you know, they're all just paint brushes, just different uh, lengths and uh, thicknesses and broad uh, natures. Really, you don't see a lot of fan brushes in miniature painting, but that's another topic. Uh, Army Painter, again, they do also do a similar thing as well as having brushes for a particular type of jobs. You know, this is a small dry brush and a regiment dry brush. Regiment dry brush, I guess, is like their base coating brush, I assume. And the small dry brush is obviously, uh, I think, pretty self-explanatory. And they, this company here also offers them in synthetics and in sables, at least when this uh, line of brushes was out. Uh, I'm not 100% sure exactly if they still currently do this kind of system. You'll often hear Series 7 Windsor Newton Miniature. Um, there are actually two different Series 7 lines. There's Miniature and then there's Series 7. And the ser I actually like the Series 7 Miniature because they got a nice short bristle length to them. They're actually really good for when, you know, you want to get in for that really close, pr uh, precise control for doing like eyeballs or very fine lines, those kinds of things but they also have another that is more akin to these other kind of brushes where the, the bristle length is a little bit longer. When we're talking about all these brushes, uh, knowing the anatomy, knowing, you know, the bristles, the furl, the handle, what the handle's made of, if it's lacquered or not, like these Rublofs are not lacquered versus like you can see these handles here are actually quite shiny. Knowing that kind of stuff is helpful when trying to explain things to other people, especially if you're teaching your friends, uh, you know, your um, your skills that you've picked up and you want to bring them up with you to so that everybody in your gaming group is painting. That's admirable. You know, it's not 100% necessary. You just know that, that that bristle length and what size a brush, you know, to use on particular jobs for example using like this small dry brush using a larger dry brush or even like you know this is a, a citadel shade brush this is a medium shade brush and i use this for all sorts of stuff not just shade washing i use it for blends uh, i use it a lot this is basically a workhorse brush for me because I often will draw the paint with this, but I will talk about that in the next video. And so with this brush, uh, you know, it's got an even longer bristle length you'll see than some of the other ones, because again, it's designed so that you can draw a lot of the shade wash onto the brush and then apply it to the miniature. Again, you know, they've uh, labeled these brushes with the intended job. 
Again, if you're taking care of all your brushes, they'll last you a long time, and some of them are kind of pricey. Some of them are very affordable. I know like the Army Painter brushes are very affordable, as opposed to the Citadel brushes, which often get uh, the, the criticism of being more overpriced. Uh, Artis Opus uh, are a premium price tag as well, but the, I have found in my experience that they're really darn good. Whereas these Rubeloff brushes, which are an, a, a sable as well, they're Klonsky sable, and they are not that expensive. These are actually very, very affordable brushes. Uh, I looked them up. Whereas Winsor Newton, these are kind of the uh, the Rolls Royce of uh, brushes as well. Uh, these are the, the high gold standard, as it were, of brushes. If you're really that concerned about having the best brushes, go for Winsor Newton Series 7s. Uh, if that kind of thing is what, you know, it motivates you to paint, and makes you, I don't know, feel good about your painting, I guess. I don't know. But otherwise, you know, a lot of painters doing really great things, uh, even with just crap dollar store brushes. And and even brushes themselves for achieving certain things. You don't even need, for example, if you have um, an airbrush and you're doing a lot of base coating, well, you're not even using a regular brush like one of these for base coating, right? You're using an airbrush. For doing fine lines, doing eyeballs, things like that. You don't even need a brush. You could use something like a black liner. These are just basically markers with very fine nibs. Like for example, the finest nib on here is a 0.4 uh, millimeter. And these are just black ink. Now, it, mind you, if you want to do it in colors, well, obviously you have to find something uh, very comparable or, you know, use a regular brush. But I, my point being is that you oftentimes don't even need to use a brush. Uh, way back in the day, I used to use thumbtacks to uh, do the eyeballs on a model because it was the only way I could get that fine, fine point because I did not know at the time how to take care of my brushes, which is, you know, a big thing, especially if you're dropping that kind of money on all of these brushes. And like I said, this is just a small, small, small selection of brushes. I know that there are plenty out there and you'll hear, and I'm sure in the comments, you'll get plenty of comments saying, no, these brushes are the best, these brushes are the best. It's entirely subjective. Do not get caught up in that kind of thing. It's it's uh, it's a waste of time. And you know, when you are relatively new to this hobby and miniature painting, it just not important. It's not important. And it just distracts you from actually sitting down and getting to your painting. And what it can end up doing is that as you're working with these brushes and you're painting your miniature, especially when you're relatively new to this hobby and you're thinking, well, these brushes I'm using and I see this other person on the internet doing really fantastic work and they're using this kind of brush. Well, that must mean I'm a crap kind of painter. And that is very far from reality. The reality being is that the person who's doing that really fantastic painting has been painting for many years and, and practices and paints a lot. And if you want to replicate what you're seeing on the internet from these people who are doing fantastic paintings, that's all you have to do is spend more time mastering your tools, mastering your materials, be it the paint, and of course, just practicing. Practice, practice, practice. That's always very key in any skill that you're trying to develop. It is practice. Nobody, do, nobody comes out of the gate doing this uh, fantastic right off the hop. Everybody starts somewhere and usually everybody is about the same pace. It is, all depends on how much time you're willing to put in to learn and grow and of course accept your mistakes. Oftentimes a lot of people are um, overthinking things and they just, you know, it's, it doesn't, again, it just doesn't get you anywhere. And uh, the, really the point of this video is just don't get caught up in all that. There are plenty of options out there. There are plenty of decent brushes. And again, when you are relatively new to this hobby and you're just getting in, again, it's, it, it, these are, oftentimes when you hear people saying, this is the best brush, this is the best brush, that is just their opinion. It's entirely subjective. Everybody's journey is different. And don't get caught up in the hoopla of what is the best brush. So stay tuned for the second part of this video. Uh, I am going to uh, demonstrate obviously good brush care and of course uh, some basic tips on taking care of your brush and maybe even restoring the brush. Big thank you to all my patrons. Without their support, these videos would not be possible. If you're considering Patreon support, click the link in the description below and you'll be taken off to a magical website called Patreon where there are varying tiers of uh, patronage, as it were. Big thank you to everybody who does. Take care of those brushes and they will take care of you.